There's a concept in genetics known as the universality of genetic code. All species use the same genetic programming. This is important because it allows scientists to do some interesting things with bacteria. In case you haven't thanked them lately, bacteria are arguably the most important life forms on Earth. They're one of the only cell types able to synthesize vitamin B12 and provide it throughout the food chain. Because of how easy it is to modify their DNA, bacteria were the first to be genetically edited. Herbert Boyer pioneered this science in 1978 when he took a version of the human insulin gene and inserted it into E. coli. After enough trials, the bacteria began producing synthetic insulin. Now, most insulin worldwide is produced by E. coli and yeast fungi, though we won't get into that right now. So what if we could modify bacteria to solve other problems? Take psilocybin, for example. That is the psychedelic compound produced by hundreds of species of mushrooms, known collectively as magic mushrooms. Historians suggest evidence of psilocybin usage dates back thousands of years ago. Prehistoric rock art in Spain shows it was used in religious rituals around 4000 BC. The Aztecs, meanwhile, called them divine mushrooms in the 1500s. Interestingly, new research makes it fair to wonder, could these ancient cultures have been using the compound for mental health benefits too? Allow us to explain. A 2016 study from Imperial College London showed psilocybin could reduce symptoms of severe depression that were otherwise untreatable by therapy and antidepressants. Similar trials have begun at King's College London and the USONA Institute in Wisconsin. But there's one problem. To treat this, we'd need to mass produce psilocybin from its natural host, which would require a significant amount of land and time. Some psilocybin is produced synthetically, but this is expensive. That's where bacteria comes in. New research from Miami University has discovered a process to sustainably produce psilocybin in E. coli, just like insulin. The team used a process known as metabolic engineering, which uses trial and error to increase a cell's ability to produce a compound. Led by Andrew Jones, the researchers eventually figured out the optimal conditions for production. 37 degrees Celsius was found to be the ideal temperature. They also optimized the timing of fermentation and the material the bacteria were grown on. Jones explained it like this, we're taking the DNA from the mushroom that encodes its ability to make this product and putting it in E. coli. It's similar to the way you make beer through a fermentation process. We're effectively taking the technology that allows for scale and speed of production and applying it to psilocybin. After 18 months of work, the results were pretty amazing. The team increased production by over 500 times from where it began to over a gram produced per liter. They're still perfecting this process, mainly with the goal of making E. coli an even better host for sustainable production. That is something the pharmaceutical industry is looking for if psilocybin can ever be mass adopted for treatment of depression. We'll continue to cover updates on this research when they come out. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you next time.